for a session brought to you by our underwriter, please welcome Brian Gross, business lead of genomics for infectious disease at Philips, and Joe Frasca, head of research and chief medical officer at Philips. Great. Well, thanks for having us. Um, we wanted to talk a little bit about a problem that's uh, on a lot of people's minds in the healthcare space. Uh, a problem that uh, we see a lot on television and a problem that uh, many of you may have personally experienced. The problem is that 1.7 million people every year get an infection during their hospital stay. 1.7 million people. And out of those 1.7 million people, 100,000 die from their hospital-acquired infection. This consumes about 9.4% of our hospital dollars, these hospital-acquired infections. And strikingly, the number of hospital-acquired infection deaths equal more than the deaths of due to prostate cancer and breast cancer combined in the United States. This is a huge problem. You've seen it in the media. You've seen the stories about superbugs, about the emergence of bacteria that are highly resistant to, to antibiotics. These superbugs are our making. We've created these superbugs of necessity by the way we have to treat patients as they arrive in the hospital. We have to give them broad spectrum antibiotics so that we treat their infections until we learn about what the actual specific infection of an individual patient is. These superbugs are becoming a huge issue within healthcare, within healthcare institutions and within our communities. Next slide. The real danger here is that as a result of the emergence of these superbugs, we've had to create more and more antibiotics. And as you know, about 80 years ago, the age of antibiotics was launched. And before that, deaths happened due to infection pretty routinely. My grandfather died here in the city of Boston from an infection, uh, a simple infection that we could treat today. We're about to launch into the next generation where there will be no antibiotics to treat these superbugs. So Philips has set out on the path to try to eliminate hospital-acquired infection with a product that we've developed using new tools that are available in, ge in genomics and in clinical informatics. And I want to hand it over to Brian Gross, who's our business leader, to talk to you a little bit about how this works. Thanks, Joe. And to set the stage, we're talking about infections that happen while you're in the hospital environment. So these are, for example, you go in for surgery, for a knee surgery or shoulder surgery, or perish the thought you had a car accident. And as part of your care within that, within that hospital, they essentially, through um, reasons that uh, may or may not be preventable, uh, gave you an infection of, of uh, potentially one of these pathogens and one of these bugs that there may not be an antibiotic to, to treat it. And these are, these are very simple, um, situations for, for people, but the impact, as Joe indicated, is, is profound and significant. And here's part of the problem, here's part of the issue. Not all infections that are in the hospital originate from within the hospital itself. So if you remove the patients who came in with an infection, for example, a urinary catheter infection or um, pneumonia from, uh, from a community setting, what you're left with is patients that um, may all look like they have the same bug and they may all look like they have the same, uh, the same infection that, that has been, um, been propagating through the hospital. But the, the, the big challenge is how do these patients become connected? How do I get from the, a patient who had an infection that looks identical to another? Is it that a caregiver was uh, perhaps not as uh, vigilant on, as washing of the hands? Was it the operating room wasn't cleaned efficiently or effectively? Was there a ventilator or an endoscope used between patients that either were not or could not be cleaned effectively to prevent that transmission from, from patient to patient? Um, so if you think about the, the different trajectories and the different ways that, um, uh, that patients move through the care system, it really becomes a huge big data problem. Um, if you look at the patient themselves, why are they in the hospital? Uh, do they have 
a risk for developing infections on their own? Um, what are the pieces of equipment that came in contact with them? It, it, was there a ventilator, or was there a catheter, or was there a central line? Um, was there a, a surgery uh, or a surgical device that came in contact? What staff or people came in contact with the, with the patient? So you, know, you can think of this as, you know, there's the nurse, there's housekeeping that came and cleaned the room every day. There's a person that delivers the, the meal trays. So there's a, a, an enormous amount of different people who come in contact not to mention the locations that patients uh, basically experience during their stay. They may come in and change the location from the emergency room to the operating room to the radiology suite up to a procedure suite into another room in the hospital multiple times a day. Um, and then, of course, there's the actual bugs and the drugs. Um, the microbes are very adaptive. Um, they can actually pass resistance from one to another simply by coming in contact with each other. So it's a very scary, very scary time. And as Joe had alluded, the, the drugs themselves are not as effective and in some cases are not effective at all. So if you take all these transactions of care, it, very quickly this becomes a big data problem. And what we've done is we've applied big data thinking and artificial intelligence to mine the clinical transactions of care that we get out of the electronic charting systems or out of the radiology information systems or things that actually collect those transactions of care uh, as part of the day-to-day um, -day operations. And essentially, this is how it works. If a patient becomes infected, the care decision of what to, what to do with that patient is essentially made. Based on that transaction, we now reach out to those different clinical sources of data and pull out those transactions of care. Things like Dr. Smith was in the operating room with the patient and did a procedure in room six of the operating uh, suite. Uh, Nurse Jones emptied the urinary catheter at this time at this location. Each of those become a transaction of care. And then we apply our artificial or adaptive intelligence on those transactions of care. and based on the similarities of this infection to other infections that have already happened in the hospital, we can make a recommendation to the care team of which patients appear to have very similar infections. And the reason why this is very important is if you think about the connections between infected patients in the hospital, um, a good example, if, if, the, if the hospital had 500 infections on an annual basis, any guess at how many connections between those 500, uh, 500 infections would need to be investigated? No guesses. It's about 125,000 different pairwise connections that you'd have to look at to determine the connections between those infections. So by doing this analytics approach, we're able to provide that initial recommendation of, of all the universe of patients, here are the ones that you want to take, uh, take advantage and, and, uh, and look at. Then what we do is we take the, the culture sample of the bacteria in, in particular, whole genome sequence that, and then use our clinical informatics I'm sorry, the bioinformatics stack that we have that looks for the genomic similarities of this infection to others that have been reported as well. So this precision view of the pathogen fingerprint, so I'm not taking human genome, I'm taking the, the bug, the, the bacteria, and looking at how it is similar to other infections. So I can tell, is it the same infection that we've seen or is it different? And by combining those, you can quickly rule out the clinical data that might recommend a bunch of patients that had similar transactions of care or similar encounters in the hospital from those that have the same genomic fingerprint. With high certainty, it's the same infection. And by bringing these two separate processes together, we're able to show that the reduction in infections that happen in the hospital um, be, are brought faster to the infection control team, more actionable to the infection control team, and as a result, we're able to bring the, the answer to, to reducing those infections. So what you described, Brian, is, is the taking two, new, two technologies that are emergent. So in, in, in bringing the EMR to, the, to the, the hospital environment over the last 10 years or so, we've created this transactional system that allows us to trace the patient journey through the healthcare system. And that creates a big data set. Right, so that big data set is what's mined now to try to figure out where the intersections are of patients who may have similar bacteria. And then new tools in genomic uh, sequencing that allow us to, for actually not too much money, sequence individual bacteria and get a whole genome sequence on those bacteria. And then with bioinformatics, line up those, those bugs and figure out which ones are related to each other in their phylogenies or in their family trees. And on that family tree, then, we trace, we trace the connections between bugs, 
and then match it up with the clinical transactions that then allow us to create this multi-dimensional grid of probability of where the patients and the bugs interacted. Right? Exactly, and this technology, Joe, invented across River in Cambridge, where Philips has their research centers. That's true. So uh, all of this uh, really uh, trying to help uh, uh, stem the tide of uh, these, these uh, hospital-acquired infections that cost so many lives every year. Thank you very much.